In a quiet corner of the insect house, the hopes of Chester's latest breeding program lie within these imported chrysalises. Emerging slowly are blue morpho butterflies. Threatened by deforestation in their natural habitat of Central and South America, the zoo wants to establish its own collection. We're hoping that we can create a self-sustaining population. It's about two or three hours after they held out from the pupa. After the, the wings are spread, we can tell is it a female or male. The first pair reveals itself as a male, peanut, and a female, Makuna. The females are much more bigger than the males. You need much more body mass, you know, to make the eggs. They have a wingspan as large as a human hand and are famous for their striking colour. The blue morphos are the flashy ones. They're big, they're bold. They flap around people as they come in. They like to land on people. When they fly, they're amazing because you just see flashes of iridescent blue. The blue morpho startles predators with its bright blue wings. But when not in flight, it's far less conspicuous. On the underside, it's completely camouflaged. So they've got brown with little eye spots all over the place. So if anything comes too close, they'll just see all these eyes looking at them, be a bit concerned at how many animals are there, and we'll just leave them well alone. From egg to butterfly, blue morphos have a total lifespan of just 115 days. The butterflies live for about two to three weeks. Generally, it's just find food, mate, lay eggs, die. So Peanut and Makuna are beginning a speed date with an awful lot riding on it. First stop, lunch. They're too big really to land on flowers, so they won't feed off the nectar. Blue morphos will only eat fruit, and they prefer the more liquid variety of fruit. Blue morphos' antennae draw them to strong smelling food. If you have a very short lifetime, like blue morphos, whatever is edible, you have to eat it. The fermented food smells much more stronger for them. This is why they're going for it, to survive. The rotting fruit, which the butterflies feed off in their warm tropical forest home, can turn alcoholic. And in the warmth of Chester's butterfly house, the fermenting chunks of pineapple and papaya are also becoming intoxicating. The more rotten, the more fermented, the better. And then just turns to alcohol and we end up with lots of drunk butterflies. Peanut is using a protruding mouth part called a proboscis, like a drinking straw, to sip an inebriating fruit cocktail. A trunk blue morpho, sometimes you'll find them just stood in their food at a slightly wonky angle, just leaning to one side, and they just won't move for hours. Peanut needs to get a move on, as Makuna's biological clock is ticking. Poor Makuna is just sat on a leaf, with her bright blue wings wide open, waiting patiently for Peanut to notice her. And Peanut, he hasn't got a care in the world. He's currently getting really drunk and ignoring her completely. There's been a bit of progress, and Peanut has decided that it is time to make a move. And he's off in search of Makuna. But Peanut could have his beer goggles on. Peanut is quite active, but unfortunately he's actively pursuing the wrong species. Blue morphos usually recognise each other by the way they fly. Every single species have a different type of flight pattern, so how their wings are moving or how fast they're moving. Some are just a straight line, others can be a bit wavy. Peanut is misreading the signs. The giant owl have got very large wings and similar methods of flying, so I think this is why Peanut gets a little bit confused. 
these alcohols in their food um, are making peanut, you know, making bad decisions. Complete fail. With Makuna still waiting on her leaf, things aren't looking good for the future of Chester's blue morphos. She only has a few days left to have her eggs fertilised and lay them before she dies. Peanut's running out of time. She is not going to be on this earth for very long, unfortunately. He needs to sober up a little bit, quickly find Makuna, just get his act together and hopefully make us some lovely eggs and caterpillars. Blue morpho butterfly Makuna has been waiting over a week for a mate. Whilst Peanut, the only eligible male in the insect house, is on the butterfly equivalent of a stag weekend. Peanut is just being very boisterous, chasing many different species of butterfly around. He's kind of generally having a good time. But this morning, he stumbles onto Makuna's leaf, a little worse for wear. Finally, Peanut found Makuna, but Peanut was very off his game. He's approaching things the wrong way round. Usually when the blue morphos mate, they are facing away from each other. If the female is interested, then she will allow him to get close enough to connect their abdomens together. Peanut is no Casanova, but he's Makuna's only hope of producing fertilised eggs, so she presents her abdomen to him. There was a lot more fumble than there should have been, but he got there eventually. They have one pair of wings wrapped inside the other, so they look like one giant butterfly. And they can stay this way for most of the day. Remarkably, Peanut seems to have the staying power. The male trying to be as calm as possible, so not really moving. And if any threat or any predator or anything come, come in close, uh, the bigger one, the female, can carry away the, even the male together with herself. Five hours later, with the sun set and the zoo now closed, Peanut and Makuna's union is finally complete. The mating was a success, it appears, and Peanut and Makuna have parted ways. Peanut has gone off in search of potentially another mate or quite possibly a bit more to drink. Now Makuna has been mated, she has to prepare herself to lay up to 100 fertilised eggs. She needs to go in search of a good meal. It's going to need a lot of energy from her and it's quite strenuous on her body to produce all those eggs. Where Makuna lays those eggs is crucial to her caterpillar's survival. In the wild, they eat a few different plants, but here there's only one on the menu. Blue morpho caterpillars are extremely fussy eaters. In the butterfly house, their caterpillars will only eat the leaves of the peanut plant. But Makuna is dining at the same fruit cocktail bar as Peanut, so she may have difficulty finding the right plant. They're really good in finding it if they are not drunk. <laughs> the more they get drunk, that means that more higher chance to find the wrong plant to lay the eggs. I'm hoping that she isn't laying eggs. The caterpillars don't eat this plant. We have seen Makuna laying eggs on a plant. Unfortunately, it is the wrong plant. And unfortunately, if they hatch out, they won't eat the plant. So unfortunately, they will starve to death. Blue morpho butterfly Makuna has laid her eggs on the wrong leaf. Her caterpillars face starvation as the only plant in the butterfly house they can eat is the peanut plant. Once the eggs hatch, the caterpillars won't have anything to eat, but I'll give her a little bit of a helping hand. What you like? While I was doing this, Makuna came and landed on my shoulder. You're just moving your babies. I don't know if you're a bit too drunk, but you've put your eggs on the wrong plant. Here we 
go, guys. Let's put you on the right food plant. Hopefully when you hatch, you'll be able to find food straight away. Nine days later, Makuna's eggs begin to hatch. You'll start to see the caterpillar push open the top and then the caterpillar's first meal is its egg. The caterpillars will move on to munching their peanut leaf. But their mother has long since had her final meal. Unfortunately, Makuna won't be around to see her young grow up. As soon as the offspring hatch, that's it, they're on their own. Their parents are dead already. Part of everyday life in the butterfly house is we do have to go around and pick up the wings that are left of the butterflies because we do have a few toads in the house that like to have a quick meal on the ones that have died on the floor. Makuna's caterpillars will spend the next 50 days feasting on their peanut plant shedding their skins four times as they grow and change and gain the energy to eventually transform into butterflies. When the whole cycle will begin again. Despite the drunken antics in the butterfly house and Makuna getting things a little bit wrong with her egg laying, they at least did help us to get our first batch of tiny little blue ball folk caterpillars hatching and we're hoping that there's going to be many more to come.